So next we're going to do the fan please. They're actually pretty easy. Don't get confused by the diagrams that are in the instructions. So we have the dots that we marked onto our fabric from the pattern piece. And we know that we need to pleat up towards the waistband. But there's a correction, I will explain that in a moment. So first you're going to take the dot that's in the upper right corner. And that's gonna be your top dot. And then you're gonna take the dot that we marked that is just under it, just below it, and bring that dot up underneath the corner dot. That's your first fan pleat. Then you're gonna take the third dot in the line and bring that up underneath those two dots, making sure that they all the dots line up as best as you can. So you're going to bring all your dots up, stacking them underneath each other into that corner. Those are your fan pleats. So I do have to insert a little correction here. When I first did the fan pleats, um, I got a little confused by the instructions saying that there should no longer be a corner between the right hand pleats and the left hand pleats. However, when you pleat up your fan pleats, you still have the original corner that the fan pleats were pleated into. So I thought that meant that there was an additional fan pleat that needed to be made to bring the right hand pleats up into that corner to eliminate it. However, that makes the waist extremely small and uh, it's not right. So uh, what they actually mean is you take the corner that you pleated all of your fan pleats into and you just let that drop. And your new waistband goes completely from the left hand pleats to the right hand pleats. Your new corner on the right side of the waistband is the bottom of your right hand pleats. I hope all of that makes sense. So now it's time to work on the back piece. So I have already pinked and bias bound all of my edges because this taffeta frays like crazy. So the way that we need to pleat the back is the first thing we need to do is create bernoose pleats. Um, I think I'm saying that correctly, but that's what I'm going to call them, bernoose pleats. So these are actually pretty easy to create. The diagrams are very helpful to make sure that you've done it correctly, but let me show you what they mean because it, it did take me a little bit to figure out. So you're gonna have your fabric folded as marked on the pattern piece, and we're going to follow the instructions marked to do the bernoose pleat. So on the pattern, you have the width of your pleat and the direction that you need to pleat marked. So we're gonna transfer over the lower part of the pleat onto the fabric with an erasable pin. To start the pleat, we're going to take the upper fabric at the mark at the bottom of the pleat and bring it up to the corner in the direction that the pattern showed us, now, ensuring that you line up all of your edges. So now you'll have four layers of fabric in this pleat. We're only going to pin together the upper three layers of fabric, leaving the bottom layer free. We're going to repeat this on the other side of the fabric, bringing the marking up to the same corner that we just did. Stacking this fold underneath the corner. Make sure that the little pockets you are creating with these folds are all on the same side of the fabric. And then pin in place just as before. When you have both sides pinned, you'll have this triangular pocket that you created which should match the diagram, letting you know that you've done it correctly. You're going to repeat this process on the other side to create your second Bernoulli pleat. There's only two on this pattern. And then you're going to stitch along the areas that you pinned to seal in place. At the corners, ensure that you stitch so that the waistband is a straight line and the corner is sealed. So next comes the waistband. I've already stitched the front piece to the waistband as marked on the pattern piece. It was very easy to follow, so I won't go into it much here. However, the back is going to be a little tricky. So we need to separate the rest of the waistband up into thirds, which I have marked here. And then we are going to take the back panel piece and take the top point of each bernoose pleat and line it up with the outer marking of this leftover waistband piece. So now there's going to be a lot of fabric left over 
between the two points that we need to pleat down. So we're just going to make as many little micro pleats as possible so that we can fit all of this fabric into this three inch section. So now that we have the center back pleated, we need to get the left and right sides of the back onto the waistband. So I'm gonna follow the diagram on the instruction. It shows very wide folds with a very small amount of pleat. So I just followed the way that this looked, staggering the pleats on top of each other. I'm not 100% certain if that was what it was calling for, but I really liked the way it looked and the most important part is it worked. It just took a little finagling to get it right. So once all that was pinned in place, I took it to my machine and stitched it all together. I will say my machine struggled to get through the very thick pleats in the back center, but we worked slowly and we got through it. After this, I just followed the instructions on how to finish off the waistband, which is folding it over half an inch on the edge and then folding it over again and stitching it closed and then attaching the closure. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this overskirt and I hope that I was able to help you out in your own endeavors. Please hit that like button if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button if you feel like it, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.